Hey, hey, Intuitive Soul Tribe. Melissa, Intuitive Soul Coach here, excited to bring to you today's collective reading where we get a healthy dose of angel therapy. Welcome back to my channel if you are returning and welcome if you are new. These are general readings, so please take what resonates and leave the rest behind. If you are interested in a personal reading or entering into the free monthly reading giveaway, you can find both of those links in the description box below. All right, so I'm really excited about this reading. As I sat in meditation prior and asked Spirit, what does the collective need to know? I heard choosing healthy patterns over destructive ones, how to choose love over fear and trust that you can bring in a path of abundance, a path of prosperity and love versus sorrow and sadness, right? Instead of limiting beliefs, instead of fear. So that's what we'll dive into today. We'll take a look at steps that you can take to come back to center, to find more balance in your world. One more, please. Let's get one more and then we'll dive in to the angel therapy messages and we'll clarify with the message from spirit so what do we have here it's interesting that the only card that flipped upright we have is ascended master so we're going to use that as our first card today now a lot of you watching are on a spiritual path you may be in a spiritually based business, a spiritual practitioner yourself, or even if you work in the corporate world or maybe you're retired, you have a connection to your higher source, whether you call this God source, whether you call it the divine, it doesn't matter what we call it, right? As long as we call it, we know we're tuned into something. And this is about powerful, loving, and wise spiritual teachers watching over and guiding you on this path. And this is how we can choose to trust our intuition, to trust that we are being led by our, our higher selves, by our spiritual team, our guides. And if you have recently called in some ascended masters, some of you have recently had dreams of possibly Buddha, uh, it could be Jesus Christ consciousness, or you may have even grew, grew up in a religious setting or background, but I feel like you are getting way more in tune with your higher self and with those on the other side, it could be loved ones or ancestors, but also with your spiritual team. So this is beautiful showing up right away because this is going to really help you ground your energy and find your center. This energy here is going to help you choose healthier patterns instead of destructive ones. Because yes, we, we choose to come into this lifetime and experience the duality that earth offers, right? So we're going to have these ups and downs. We're going to have these experiences that seem crazy at times, right? They seem difficult. They seem challenging. They seem far-fetched, but we don't have to stay in this lower vibrational frequency throughout the entirety of our time here on earth. And that's what the Ascended Masters want you to know. So we're going to take a look and get a few spiritual messages here. We're going to use the spirit message Oracle deck, John Holland, and we're going to see how you yourself can tune into these ascended masters. Aside from, of course, meditation, that is one of the biggest ways that you can tune in, but trusting, trusting the self most importantly here as well. Because a lot of you may have succumbed to fear-based energies, limiting beliefs, and even sorrow at times. And sometimes it's difficult to pick ourselves up out of a place of sorrow, depression, or fear when we feel like we've been stuck in it for so long or we have conditions that have been ingrained, it feels like, in our DNA to to hinder us from moving forward. Let's see what messages are coming in. What do your ascended masters want you to know at this time? They want you to reach out. And I hear so many people say, well, I don't want anything to do with humans, with society, with people. Everything's going crazy, right? This is not the time to single ourselves out. If anything, this is the time for us to reach out and connect more so now than we ever have before in history. And it says, we know you're reaching out right now for help due to a current situation. Support is as much about the physical act of accepting help where offered as it is about the emotional benefits 
and learning that it's truly okay to support however, to accept support however it's presented. Sometimes we ask, we beg, we pray, we get on our knees, but when that help comes, we say, no, no thank you. There's an old story, and some of you may have heard this as well. It's the story of, I believe a man was in a tower and there was a huge hurricane coming in and there's water all around and he he really needs to get out of this situation or he's going to drown. So he prays and he begs God, please God, get me out of this situation. An hour later, a boat comes along and says, hey, do you need help? Come on on the boat and we'll get you out of this situation. And he goes, oh, no, no, that's fine. God's going to get me out of this, right? And the boat goes on its way. And so the guy begs and begs, please, God, get me out of this situation. And an hour later, you know, a helicopter comes in. And by this time, the water is pretty high on that tower. And the guy's at the very top. And the helicopter is, is speaking through the microphone and says, hey, come on up. We're dropping the ladder. Here's, let's get you out of this situation. No, 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 thanks. God's going to help me. Right. And the guy refuses the help. And when he dies, because he does ultimately drown, he gets to heaven and he says, God, why didn't you help me? And God says, why didn't you listen? I brought help. I brought, you know, the people that could help you on your path, on your journey. But sometimes we don't always see what's right in front of us. We don't always see that we have the resources, the the people, the abundance. So it's important for us to not just reach out and ask, but to be open to receiving as well. And one way that we can do this, beautiful souls, is knowledge, is to study as well. The more we know, the better off we are. If you do not know something, and I don't mean necessarily going back to to school, although that could be the case for some of you, this is about asking, being able to ask for what it is that you want. If you don't know how to do something, let's say your refrigerator breaks down and you're not a refrigerator expert, you would call a technician to come look at the refrigerator. You would use their skills and uh, there's an equal give and take. You pay them for their service. That's the same when it comes to life, right? If there's something that you do not know how to heal, fix, or navigate through, it's important to call upon others instead of feeling like we have to do it all ourselves because this is this energy of reciprocity. This is why we have relationships and partnerships and other humans here on earth to help us evolve. We are here to help each other. So spirit has its own special way of letting you know that it's time to study again. There's something here that you are ready to take a leap on and learn. This is about you keeping an open mindset. From time to time, it's important to go back and learn, whether that's learning old things in a new way or learning something totally new. This is an opportunity to expand your mind. And that's what your Ascended Masters are navigating you to do at this time. This could be learning how to open your own business. This could be learning how to open your heart after deep sorrow and loss. This could be learning how to do something that maybe you've always wanted to do. Maybe it is go back to school. Maybe it is doing something that scares you, right? This is the time for you to truly step into your power and move forward in the direction of your soul's path, your soul's journey. You also have your soul power. This is important and your ascended masters want you to remember this, your guides, your loved ones, everyone on the other side that you connect to as well. Remember that you are a soul that comes with a body, not a body that comes with a soul. Your soul is your true essence and you have an unlimited supply of soul power at your command whenever you need it. And I always like to give the reference of a water hose, a water spigot. And this is interesting because I actually just hooked up mine uh, yesterday to water the lawn. And this is coming up again because it's like we have that, that water supply, right? If we're fortunate enough, we have access to water. There are so many people in this world that do not. But if you are one of the fortunate ones that have access to water, imagine 
uh, your, your hose being hooked up to that water supply. And as we navigate through life, we tend to kink that hose. There's a kink here, there's a kink there, there may be a huge kink or there may be little kinks in that hose. However, we have that access to the supply at all times. It's the conditions that tend to kink that hose, but it's up to us and it's our responsibility to find out where that kink is so we can we can come back to source center so we can come back to letting things flow instead of feeling the resistance here. So remember that you have access to this supply at all times. This is each and every one of us, right? So I do feel here for a lot of you, we tend to disconnect because of so many kinks that have happened in our world. But remember that you are a soul here that comes with a body. So take care of that body as well. Nurture that body. Health has been a really huge theme that's been coming up lately, especially in the June, July, and August months. But I'm also getting 2023 in general. Health is on the minds of many people because as we navigate, as we ascend, as we increase our vibration, so this 5D energy, that beautiful planet Earth is, is in and heading in, we need to upgrade our ourselves as well, our bodies, our vehicle, our vessel. And a lot of us are taking a look at what we are putting into our bodies. And that doesn't just include food. It's relationships. It's what we do for a living. It is who we surround ourselves with. So those are the messages here from your Ascended Masters. Next up we have Archangel Michael. You are working very closely with this powerful Archangel who's protecting and guiding you through this situation. So Archangel Michael comes in and does offer protection, especially when there are fear-based energies, limiting beliefs, or you don't feel supported, right? You don't feel like things are happening for you. Sometimes you, you feel like they're happening to you. And that can be a limiting belief that sets you back. Let's take a look and see what messages are coming in with Archangel Michael. And for those of you that may be thinking, Melissa, I've never connected with the angelic realm, or I don't even know where to begin connecting with Archangel Michael. It is about you really staying in and embracing the moment. Embrace this day in this very moment. Think positively today and repel those negative thoughts. So you may be working with this archangel to help you release negative negativity, to release destructive patterns, whether it's addictions, whether it does have to do with health, it can be setbacks that you have, you've taken into a habitual pattern such as procrastination. That's a big one, right? Or telling ourselves, I, I'll wait for tomorrow, or I just can't do this, or I'm not good enough. This is saying here, Archangel Michael can help you release some of those negative patterns. Try not to judge others or yourself, beautiful souls. Judgment is such, such a strong negative energy. It really is. It's one of the lowest frequencies, judgment, blame, and criticism. But we see that happening every single day. We see it happening at the grocery store, at our schools. We see it in higher governing agencies. This is about you seeing things from that higher perspective and not judging yourself, not judging others. And we can do that through forgiveness. We can do that through connecting with this Archangel Michael energy here and help and have you move through these situations with more ease because this is hard. This is really difficult to do at times. What is actually happening is that you are changing your energy and I feel like you're protected and divinely directed along the way as well. So if you tend to feel like you are being judged harshly or other people judge you, ask Archangel Michael to cut those cords. Let's see what else is coming in here for Archangel Michael, please. Ooh, right away. Okay, you have vulnerability and believe the force that works through your soul determining what's possible or impossible the difference between success over failure and above all who you are is the power of your belief absolutely what you think about you bring about this is about letting go and letting god as wayne dyer always used to say here what your beliefs represent 
right? They could be based on conditioning. It could be someone else's beliefs as well. If they no longer match or if they are not true to your soul, if you take a look at them and say, well, I do believe that because that's what my parents taught me, right? Is it hindering your life? Is it helping your life? Can you choose new healthy beliefs over destructive patterns? Maybe you were brought up in a situation or in, a, in an environment where you were told that you have to stay in marriage the whole nine yards, right? You have to stay in it. But do you have to stay in it if it's toxic? Do you have to stay in it if it's abusive? Do you have to stay in it if you and your partner, your, your soul journey has ended? That's something that you need to ask yourself. Can I upgrade that belief and choose a, a pattern or belief for myself to live a more rich and rewarding life? Perhaps you were in a family dynamic where no one went to college, right? Maybe they worked on a farm or they had to go and do whatever they had to do to, to put food on the table and raise the children. And maybe you have that limiting belief that you have to work really, really, really hard to accumulate success, right? Can you upgrade that belief and tell yourself that you owe it to you? You owe it to the people around you and as well as your ancestors, maybe your children, your family, to live your dream and to be a success doing so. So really taking a look at the beliefs around your life, what's helping you, what's hindering you, what's healthy versus what is destructive right? What can you choose to upgrade at this time to enhance your life? And some of you, this is going to be really difficult. I know for a big chunk of my own life, I was raised in fight or flight. I had to be independent. I had to be the parent at a very, very young age. So vulnerability was taught to me as a weakness, right? But vulnerability is one of our greatest strengths. And I see that now and I use that every day. And I always used to wonder, why uh, why people cried so much, right? Whether it was something was happy, whether something was sad, uh, these, these emotions, because I didn't always tune into that emotional side because I, I numbed them. I didn't want to feel them. I had to stay in this position of independence is what I thought it was, right? But this is our greatest strength. When we can be vulnerable with not just ourselves, but with the people around us, that is the true gift. That's where that miracle lies. This is confirmation that you are seeking to tread into the unknown, unfamiliar territory where decisions are based more on intuition than rationality. Don't let fear hold you back or allow a misguided sense that feeling vulnerable is somehow a negative condition. Some of you may have this belief set in your energy, ingrained in your energy from a very small age like I did. You could have Archangel Michael cut that cord, right? You can embrace the moment more by being vulnerable in all areas of your life. You can take back your power and you can upgrade those belief systems to live a more rich, fulfilling life, beautiful souls. All right, next you have here, cancel, clear, delete. Use only positive words and thoughts as they are rapidly manifesting into form. Ask the angels to cancel the effects of past negative thinking. Cancel, clear, delete. You can even jot that down on a sticky pad or a notepad, put it on your refrigerator, put it in your visor in your vehicle, put it in your wallet or your purse, and remind yourself when a negative thought pattern comes in, cancel, clear, delete. So let's take a look and see what messages spirit has regarding negative beliefs. And we just touched based on that a little bit as well. But past negative thinking is difficult to overcome. It really is. When we've known something for so long, it can be difficult to break that pattern. There's a really good book, uh, Atomic Habits, that can uh, help you break old patterns and incorporate new ones into your world. So we have here, have fun. Embracing that inner child, that's going to help you as well. And this does go back to, for some of you, some inner child wounding, some healing, and it may be around a father's love, right? Sometimes we, we seek approval. We want approval from our fathers, or we may have had a father who was not present in our lives, either physically or emotionally. Maybe they left, maybe uh, they suffered from an addiction. This can be about deleting, canceling, and um, 
clearing away this energy by forgiveness, by acceptance, understanding that each person in our lives plays a significant role in our world here on earth. I believe that we choose our soul tribe, that we choose our fathers, that we choose our mothers, our partners, our children. We choose them for our soul's growth, right? We plan prior to coming into this lifetime what we want to learn, who we want to learn it from, and the type of situations that we would like to, to be in, right? Of course, we have free will. But I do sense that a lot of you, uh, we tend to forget. We tend to forget that we have a choice. And it says, when was the last time you had fun? When was the last time you took a chance and did something silly? Something totally unlike you. Yeah, there it is. Because when we get stuck in that thought pattern or the past, it holds us into a cycle, right? I'll just stay on the couch today and binge watch Netflix instead of using that gym membership because it's easier, right? Instead of forgiving my father for being an alcoholic uh, a-hole, right? I'm just going to hate him because it's easier. Instead of, instead of looking at what we really want to do in our lives as far as our career, which may take work, everything good takes work. Instead of going back to school or building a business, I'm just going to stay in this dead-end job, living paycheck to paycheck because ah, that's easier, right? I feel for a lot of you, this is really about you stepping into your power and so many of you have already done this here on earth. This is about asking the angels again to release that past conditioning of negative thinking and procrastination and that's showing up even though we haven't even seen that word, that's the word I'm getting here from spirit is procrast procrastination and now is the time. Now some of you had the most loving, genuine, affectionate father out there. And I feel if that is you, or if you have wanted to connect with the father who's crossed over, or maybe he's still living, I feel like there is a big message here for you to look into this energy. Make that call. Forgive. Write that letter. Right? It doesn't mean that you have to physically come together if he is still on earth here. But there is, may still be a lot of bitterness or a lot of pain or sorrow that's emanating from the heart chakra. It says a father's love for his son or daughter never dies. The strength gained from such love is often unquantifiable. And that it can be tapped into at any time for whatever reason. So remember that. You can tap into this energy. Whether your father was the greatest or the worst. Whether they are on the other side or they're still living. We can tap into this energy now. We don't have to let that be the, the end all. Right? Something that happened 40 years ago. We don't have to let that still define or control our lives. It was an experience that we chose to have. Now, when we come to earth, we have free will. What we want to do with this experience, that is the beauty of free will. A father's love is one of the strongest bonds any of us will ever have. So a lot of you may be healing or dealing with something around the father and the heart center here. Inner childhood wounding. This can, you can really benefit from healing and diving in some of those patterns that I've learned in childhood, such as fight or flight or being that, that soul survivor, right? The lone wolf, the one that has to, to take care of everyone else. Yes, I've incorporated into my adult life in a very positive way where now I, I help you beautiful souls. I've always been able to tune into these, these spiritual energies from, a, from very, very, very early on, but sometimes we can can incorporate some of the, the negative side or the shadow sides of things, but I've learned to use that shadow, bring it to the light and become allies with it. And that's what this is having you do as well. It's long overdue for you to let go of your analytical mind and give yourself and your soul permission to have fun. Because some of you, you know, when we're children, we, we always want to have fun, right? We want to go to the park and go on the swings and go to the beach and play with toys and play with other children. Do you remember that fun time, right? I feel like my childhood was cut short, so it's important for me as an adult to have fun. It's important for me to not let that analytical mind take over. I'm an air sign. Sometimes I can reel, right? I can think over and over, and then I have to remind myself, and spirit comes in and says, all right, Melissa, time to, to have more fun, time to head in a new direction. That is what spirit is guiding you to do as well. Open yourself up, have fun. There may be too much working going on, some 
overthinking here. Some of you may feel burnt out or you just need some time to relax. That's where we go back to what the Ascended Masters said here and reach out. Ask for someone to come watch the kids so you can have an afternoon for yourself. Uh, ask someone or hire, if you're blessed enough, to, to have someone come clean the home so you don't have to. Or this could even be you going and having an afternoon with your friends, going and walking in the park. It doesn't have to cost money, but reach out so you can spend some time with the most important person in your world, and that's you, right? Spend some time with you and call in the angels for help doing this. What else do we have here? Law of attraction. Relationships and activities that you once enjoyed are now changing as you become more sensitive and aware of the energies. And as we mentioned earlier, we are ascending. A lot of us have already ascended and now we're trying to integrate, right? And that's why things feel off kilter. We think that the we should still be in this old paradigm or we should still like what it is that we were doing in the past or that relationship or that situationship, right? But this is a about you moving forward and sometimes those things fall to the wayside that job that we just have no interest in in it's not fulfilling that relationship that may have been one-sided or that uh, pain or trauma that you've been carrying right it's time to release because things are rapidly manifesting work with the law of attraction to bring in more abundance work with that law of attraction to say yes to what it is that your soul truly desires. So if there are things that no longer uh, interest you, such as maybe even sugary foods or meat or things that you once enjoyed, you may not have a taste for any longer. And when I say a taste, it's not just food, but it's a taste for the things that you once did enjoy. Don't be or feel guilty that these things are changing because that is the only constant in life is change, right? So it's important for us to embrace these changes instead of resisting them because the law of attraction is working in your favor and a lot of you are really mastering how to attract the things that you want. You may have even taken a course or a class on the law of attraction. Maybe you even read uh, The Secrets or you may have uh, dove into working with the laws of uh, the universe here. I'm also getting that you may have created vision boards. I myself love vision boards. That's one of my favorite law of attraction tools. Uh, but this can be about you setting goals for yourself as well and attracting them into your world by taking action, right? Take one step toward the gods. They'll take 10 steps towards you. So really beautiful energy. Let's clarify what's coming in here for you. What do we have? How can we attract more things into our world? All right. Knowing that you're not alone, first and foremost, because when we single ourselves out, when we feel disconnected or we feel like we are on this path where we are the only ones, right, it, then we tend to prolong having those things in our world, right? When we live in this place of fear, sorrow, grief, we tend to have a really difficult time living in that life of abundance, we are here for you and we never left through all the sadness and loneliness. However, you cannot sense us near you or feel how much love we are sending you. We are your family, friends, and guides. We never left you. You never walk alone. We walk right beside you. So really beautiful, staying connected, knowing that you don't have to go through this lifetime alone. And that's come up so often. I have so many people say, well, I'm, I'm single or I don't have any family. I don't know how to connect. Uh, reaching out, of course, connecting with the ascended masters and the angels, calling in soul tribe. Ta again, taking one step towards the gods. So that means if you want to attract soul tribe family connections, we may have a hard time doing it sitting on our couch. You certainly can. We have technology at our fingertips nowadays. But if you want and you're craving that physical connection, then there is this energy of putting yourself out there. And that can be even from, like I said, your computer, your laptop, or your phone. But vulnerability, and they're bringing me back to that vulnerability card, is key. And you're not alone. Nature, getting back out in nature can help you ground your energy. It can help you feel like you 
are a part of something greater. When you look around and you see a butterfly land, you see the trees flowing and the, the breeze and the sunshine, that truly is magnificent. It helps you connect with that Mother Earth energy and help you feel connected to source. That can help uh, release some of those kinks in the hose because it can actually help you find solutions to some of those kinks by getting out in nature. This is time to absorb the healing properties that nature has to offer. Your mind, body, and soul need nourishment, energy, revitalization, and strength. Nature has much to offer, so take time to connect and spend quality time outdoors. Who just made moon water? They're giving me moon water. Some of you, it's not going to resonate. You're probably wondering, Melissa, what is moon water? But I'm getting that someone has recently put a jar out underneath the full moonlight. And moon water, that's basically what it is. You put a jar of water out under the moon, uh, just like you would maybe recharge your crystals. And then you can use that moon water maybe as you draw a bath or to water. I use moon water to water plants, things of that nature as well. But more importantly, it can be even more beneficial just to get out there under that moonlight and soak up the vibes. So even though uh, that's you know nature, I'm getting the sunshine from the nature here as well. There's something regarding the moon as as well. So if you're recently getting into maybe a moonology or working with the full moon or noon moon cycles, that can be really beneficial for you as well. It can help you nurture more happiness versus sorrow. Gratitude and self-love. This is the biggest piece here, I feel, when it comes to the law of attraction. I even keep a gratitude journal. Uh, I, not Aside from just the gratitude journal, I do what is called a peak and pit. Uh, with three things we're grateful for at the end of our day. When we eat our family meals together, what is the, the peak of the day, the highlight? What is the pit? And what are three things we're grateful for? Because that gets your family talking. It gets, uh, you know, it gets the conversation flowing and it keeps us in that state of gratitude and abundance. But it also, it takes a look at the shadow part of the day, which is the pit as well, because it's important not to not to cast aside things that are difficult or negative or we feel depressed or down about. It's important to bring that into balance, which is why we do a peak and a pit. So gratitude is the key when it comes to law of attraction. We can be thankful for even the pits that happen in our world as well. Life is one big continuous circle of giving and receiving energy. Be thankful for who and what is in your life instead of complaining about what you don't have because when you complain, I don't have enough money, I don't have love, I don't have the job that I want, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. What is the universe here? The same thing that you're telling the universe, right? There's no game in between. It's pretty strange. It's pretty clear. You're saying I don't have it. The universe hears that you don't have it. That's what you receive, right? So it says if you focus on gratitude, you'll start to attract prosperity and abundance. I am rich. I am rich in resources. I am rich in abundance, right? I am rich in family and friend life. I am blessed uh, with a full fridge. I am blessed with uh, with money in my account with whatever it may be for you, right? The more that you focus on, and it doesn't even have to be physical things. It should be emotional. It should be, you know, within intuitive as well. Uh, I am, I just wrote in my gratitude journal today where I actually had to do a second column because there was just so much. And it was, you know, I'm grateful for knowledge. I'm grateful for, you know, running water. I'm grateful for the smell of grass, right? I am grateful for the sun shining on my skin today. So it doesn't have to necessarily be physical. It can be the feelings of things. And that's where that true manifestation happens. It's it's being able to feel the belief or the feelings behind something here and self-love. When you feel worthy, when you feel confident and deserving of these things, which you absolutely are, there is not one thing in this world that that could tell you that you're not worthy of these good things, okay? So if you've been taught that or if you feel that, that is absolutely a lie, get rid of that. Ask Archangel Michael to come in and cut that cord right away for you because now is the time to love, nurture, and heal yourself. Self-love is not simply a state of mind about feeling good. It's a state of appreciation for yourself that grows and matures from actions you take to support your body, mind, and soul, right? The law of attraction. I mean, what do we want here on earth? Most likely we want 
friendships and families. We want to live a healthy lifestyle. We want to maybe even raise a few children and have it feel reciprocal uh, where, you know, we we have these humans that love us in return and there's a, a balance. We want to feel good about what we do to make a living and we want these things to feel balanced, but life doesn't always turn out the way that we think, right? But regardless of what happens, what negative things happen to us or challenges, struggles, traumas. It's important to always come back to self and remember where you come from and that's love and to focus on self-love more so now than ever. Okay. All right. What else do we have here? Shield yourself. Shield yourself. This is huge. And so many times I have clients that come into my office, sit in my chair and they say, Melissa, I just can't, I can't, there's just, I feel so overwhelmed. Well, for one, a lot of you are highly, highly empathic and you're not only just picking up on the energies of what you're feeling, but you're feeling the energies of the person that just walked into the grocery store, right? You're feeling the energies of the person that lives with you. Uh, you're feeling the energies of what's going on around the world. And this can be very, very challenging and it can seem like a curse sometimes, but it's really a sensitivity and it's a gift to feel so much because we can help others. Protect yourself from harsh or fear-based energies by envisioning a cocoon of healing light surrounding you. You can always ask Archangel Michael to come in and protect you. You can imagine in your mental mind here an actual shield, right? You can see that he has that shield there. Or you can imagine uh, that golden or white light coming through your crown chakra and uh, just vibrating. Every time you go into a situation, uh, an environment or workplace, family gathering, grocery store, wherever, and if you tend to pick up on energies of others, it's important to shield yourself. Now, if you work in a caring profession, a healing profession, the mental health, anything of that nature, or wherever, it doesn't matter, but if you take on other people's stuff for a living, it's very important to to release that energy, especially when you walk out the door or as soon as you get home. You can do that by taking a shower and imagining everything that you've accumulated uh, going down the drain, right? You can even do a mental sweep. I've had clients that just kind of push the energy down, back down to the mother earth, back down to the ground, transmute that so they're not carrying it with them. So some of you may have to protect yourself from the energies of others, but you can see here in the shield, there's a fierce lion. So you have the strength, you have the determination. Some of you may be Leos, but I do sense here that you are protected, you are supported here, and you have what it takes to shield your energy from negativity. You can choose to put that up. It doesn't mean that you know, you're never gonna see it, but it's how it affects you, right? Are you gonna let it take over? Are you gonna let it store itself within your body and create dis-ease, right? Shield yourself from the energies. Let's see what messages are coming in from spirit. What do we have here for you beautiful souls? All right, a child's love, a child's love. And this is important too, because the love between parents and child is one of the most precious and deep connections we make. However, sometimes we feel like we need to disconnect from our parents, right? Sometimes we feel like we need to shield ourselves because you may have grew up with a mother who was not emotionally available. She didn't show you that type of love. Or there could have been an energy uh, between you and your own child as well. Now, I'm not saying you need to shield yourself from that person, but there could be, you know what they say, sometimes the people that we love the most hurt us the most. And this could be about shielding that energy in order for us to not take that on. And that can be so challenging, so difficult, especially when it is someone that you love, such as a parent, a sibling, a child, a, a lover, a spouse, a significant other, right? But you may be taking on the energies of other people, but it's important to remember, beautiful souls, that you are having your own soul journey and they are having th theirs. And if there is something toxic coming at you, right? If there is something that is abusive coming at you, this is time to shield yourself in whatever way possible. And no is a perfectly acceptable 
sentence, right? No, I'm just not going to deal with that. I've had to do that in my own personal life as well when it comes to some family members. I can choose to love from a distance, right? I can choose because I, I understand that not everyone is going to heal in this lifetime. Not everyone is going to evolve or see things the way that we see them, right? And that's their soul's journey. It's not up to me or it's not up to you to fix or to make someone see what they cannot. And that's why one of my favorite sayings, you hear me say this all the time, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? We can be the guide. We can be the, the soul coach, right? We can be the person that is the role model. But when it comes to someone else's decisions in their own lives, we have no control over, nor should we want to take on that responsibility, right? Because that's huge. And what we do as we, we focus then more so on other people's happiness or other people's stuff, or we let it interfere and that creates codependency. And we don't want that. Codependency isn't a fun energy to be in. So shield yourself if need be. And last but not least, what do we have from the angels? Angel therapy, singing and dancing. I love this ending card. Get your dance on. Belt out a song. A lot of you have beautiful, beautiful voices, right? Singing and dancing, oming and chanting, drumming, getting out there and just letting loose. Go dance in the rain. Go belly dancing. Go singing. Go sing karaoke. Whatever brings out that inner child. Uh, or express anything you can do to express yourself and awaken your psychic senses through the magical power of music and movement. I'm loving this for you here. Let's see what final messages spirit has for you to choose healthy over destructive, to choose happy over sad and love over fear. What do we have here? And look at that. It landed right on that one as well. So let's take a look receive. It's interesting that we talk about receiving abundance, receiving love in the beginning of your reading. And then your final card here is receive. They're giving me the name here, Nicole. Nicole. So if your name is Nicole, if that is someone around you, a child, a parent, a sibling, a sister, please take it as it resonates. It could be a middle name as well. You are a kind and loving soul who constantly reaches out and gives to others. But now it's time for you to learn how to graciously receive. Just as, we, just as with the ebb and flow of the tides, the art of giving and receiving is the natural law and order of the universe. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is time for you to receive your gift. You are the gift. And it's interesting. I just read something this morning that says when we give our gift away, we actually are able to keep it, right? When we are able to give our gifts away, we keep our gift. And that's really powerful when you think about it because that can be, you know, that reciprocity. When we can be of service, when we can be kind and compassionate and put ourselves out there, when we can truly entirely be vulnerable is when we can be open to receiving as well. And we're going to see that, you know, we have these skills and these gifts and these talents here on earth. We are all individual, authentic, unique souls that have this powerful divine expression within us. And it's time for you to receive these blessings. And I certainly know without a doubt that you will, but stay open to receiving them, beautiful souls. Very powerful. Let's get one last ending final message from your spiritual team. I hope you're enjoying this reading. If so, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button. It certainly helps get the divine channel messages out there to those that need it most. All right, last but not least, ooh, ancestral wisdom. Oh my goodness, you can't make this up. Like I said, you start with this energy of receptivity and ascended masters, and you wind it down with receiving and ancestral wisdom. So what a beautiful world-like energy of what goes around comes around. That's the message I'm getting here. So be, what you put out there is what you're going to get in return. And that can, that can at times bring in that nurturing, happy energy, but knowing that it doesn't mean that you're void of, you know, sadness and sorrow or disappointments or challenges, but it means that everything's going to work its way around, right? Karma, basically. We are your ancestors and we love you. We walk the earth many years before you. We ask you at this poignant time to learn and grow from our past experiences. 
You are our legacy, and we will keep on helping you as we continue to evolve here in the spirit world. Yeah, a lot of you are breaking ancestral patterns. I've seen this more in 2021, 2022, and 2023 than I ever have uh, you know, in my line of work or in my personal life as well. The ancestral patterns are being eradicated, right? This means that we have this choice to choose for ourselves. I mean, we always have, but it is so strong at this time that we don't have to do what we've been taught, right? We don't have to do what's always been done. We can maybe be the first one in our family to decide that it's okay to not have children or it's okay to be an entrepreneur. It's okay to be an influencer or to go off over here and do something that's never been done in the in the history of your family dynamic, right? Maybe you're breaking free from the family dynamic, whatever this may be for you. There is ascended masters and ancestral wisdom and healing. And I do sense here healing with multiple generational cycles. Some of you, have, you've decided to incarnate into this lifetime, into a bloodline, into a family dynamic to help your soul evolve. And within that, it can be very difficult, especially if you come from a long line of maybe alcoholics or you come from a long line of, you know, uh, workers, uh, people who work night from night up to night or, you know, from, from the morning to the night, you know, all day, all night it could be farmers. It could be anyone here, but I feel like you're breaking that mold. You're doing things differently. Now the way they did it, that worked for them. That that's good. That worked for what they needed to do at that time. That was their sole purpose, but you have the opportunities, the choices to make different decisions where you can break that cycle. So really powerful messages come. Oh, and I didn't even see this this little bugger sneak in. Where did this come from? Did you all see that one fly out? It landed here. It may have been with this last one, but it landed on the law of attraction. And we have here breathe. So I guess this is our final one before we close down the reading. The breath is the vital bridge between your body and soul. Ooh, this is a great one to have, especially because we're talking about the dualities, intuition, and how to stay connected. It's the connection between the inside and the outside, connecting you to the universe, spirit, and the divine source. The breath permeates your entire being with prana, which is the same life-giving force that nourishes everything in the universe. Yeah, you may really benefit from breath work. For those of you that are really busy parents, entrepreneurs, you have many responsibilities, you're juggling many things, you may want to incorporate more breath work into your daily routine. This is deep belly breaths from the solar plexus chakra versus that fight or flight, the short, shallow breaths that we don't even realize that we take half the time, right? You can really focus on the breath and that can help you come back to your center. All right, beautiful souls. I hope this reading helps you out. I hope you at least obtained a little nugget of knowledge or information to help you on your soul's path and your soul's journey. You have everything you need in your toolbox to lead a rich, rewarding, abundant, successful, loving life. Believe it for yourself because I do. Thank you so much for tuning in and being here. Lots of love.